Next we will look at some basic concepts from material science. These include stress, strain, and elastic deformation. Stress is caused by a force acting on an area. It is equal to the force per unit area and has units of pascals or newtons per meter squared. Applying any force on a section of material causes deformation which in turn, as we will see later, causes the area to change. The question then, is what is the area in the shown equation? Is it the area before the application of the force, or after the application of the force? If the area used in the formula is the area before the application of the force, the stress is known as the engineering stress. If the area used in the formula is the area after the application of the force, the stress is known as the true stress. If the term stress is used without any qualifiers, usually what is meant is the engineering stress. In English units, stress is usually expressed in units of pounds force per square inches or PSI to convert from units of pascals to PSI multiply by 0.00015 for 5. Tensile and compressive forces act normally more perpendicular to the cross-sectional area of the specimen that is under normal stress. The normal stress is usually written using the Greek symbol sigma and is equal to the force divided by the normal area on which the force is acting. The shear force acts parallel to the cross-sectional area of the specimen that is under shear stress. The shear stress is usually written using the Greek symbol tau and is equal to the force divided by the parallel area on which the force is acting. Strain is the deformation of the material under stress. There are two types of strain, tensile and compressive strains, and shear strain. A specimen that is under tensile or compressive stress will undergo a certain amount of deformation or strain that will take the form of elongation or compression respectively. The tensile or compressive strain is usually written using the Greek symbol epsilon. The strain is equal to the change in the length of the specimen divided by the original length. This is the reason why it is sometimes called unit strain to distinguish it from the total strain which is simply equal to the change in the length of the specimen. When the term strain is used without any qualifiers, what is meant is the unit strain the unit strain, or simply the strain, is a unitless parameter since it has units of length per unit length. Sometimes the strain is expressed as percent strain, which is equal to the unit strain times 100. When a specimen is subjected to an axial tensile stress, the elongation along the axial direction is accompanied by a contraction in the transverse or lateral directions. In other words, as the length of the specimen increases due to the tension, the cross-sectional area of the specimen is reduced. The opposite happens when the specimen is under compression. In this case, as the length of the specimen contracts, the cross-sectional area increases. Contrary to what some might expect though, the change in the cross-sectional area does not cause the overall volume of the specimen to remain constant. p weight zones ratio relates the strain in the lateral direction to the strain in the axial direction that is parallel to the direction of the stress-inducing force. P weight zones ratio is equal to the negative of the lateral strain divided by the axial strain. For a specimen with a circular cross section, the lateral strain is equal to the change in the specimen's diameter divided by the original specimen diameter. For a specimen with a rectangular cross section, the lateral strain is equal to the change in any of the two width dimensions of that specimen divided by the original value of that width dimension. Shear strain is the deviation of the right angle of a square element of a specimen from the value of pi over 2 or 90 degrees. Shear strain is usually written using the Greek symbol gamma. The shear strain has units of radians. Note that radians are unitless, since for small strains, the radian is a ratio of a change in length of a line over the length of another line perpendicular to it. Elastic deformation is defined as any deformation that is fully recovered when the load is removed. In other words, a specimen is deforming elastically if it regains its original shape after the force that caused the deformation is set to zero. The material is said to obey Hooke's law if, during elastic deformation under tensile, 
compressive for shear stress. The stress is proportional to the strain. In other words, a material whose stress strain curve is linear in its initial part is said to obey Hooke's law. It should be noted that not all materials obey Hooke's law during elastic deformation. The material that obeys Hooke's law continues to exhibit a linear stress strain relationship as the stress is increased until the stress reaches the proportional limit value for that material. At this point, the stress strain relationship becomes nonlinear. The modulus of elasticity is the proportionality constant that relates the stress to the strain during unit axial tension or compression for materials that follow Hooke's law. It is also known as Young's modulus, and is equal to the stress divided by the strain. It can also be expressed in terms of the slope of the stress strain curve, as the tangent of the angle theta that is shown on the graph. Since the strain is unitless, the modulus of elasticity is the same units as the stress. In metric units it is usually given in units of gigapascals, or GPA, while in English units it is usually given in units of megapounds per square inches, or MPSI. The modulus of rigidity is the proportionality constant that relates the shear stress to the shear strain during shear loading, for materials that follow Hooke's law. It is also known as the shear modulus of elasticity, and is equal to the shear stress divided by the shear strain. It can also be expressed in terms of the slope of the shear stress strain curve, as the tangent of the angle theta that is shown on the graph. Similar to normal strain, the shear strain is also unitless, and therefore, the modulus of rigidity has the same units as the shear stress. Recall that shear strain can be expressed in units of radians, which are unitless. In metric units it is usually given in units of gigapascals, or GPA, while in English units it is usually given in units of megapounds per square inches, or MPSI. There is a relationship between the three elastic constants, where for a given material, the modulus of elasticity, divided by 2 times the modulus of rigidity, is equal to 1 plus p Weissone's ratio. Review Questions what is the definition of stress? Right answer. What are the units of stress? Right answer. What is the normal force required to break a square specimen that has a yield strength of 230 megapascal, an ultimate tensile strength of 460 megapascal and whose sides measure 1 centimeter long? Please give the answer in units of kilo newtons or thousands of newtons. Right answer. What are the units of unit strain? Right answer. What are the units of total strain? Right answer. A specimen with the shown cross-sectional area and a length of 1 meter undergoes an axial tension loading that results in an elongation of 10 centimeters. If P-Weissone's ratio of the material is equal to 0.3, what is the dimension under load of the side that is 2 cm long? Right answer. A specimen with a modulus of elasticity of 200 GPa increases in length by 2% when subjected to an axial load. What is the stress in the specimen? Right answer. What is measured by the modulus of resilience? Right answer. What is P Weissone's ratio of a material that has a Young's modulus of 240 gigapascals and a modulus of rigidity of 100 gigapascals? Right answer. 